I, I'll step it up, I promise. Guess what we got? We Get got grand finals. finals here. It's Knees, it's Godly, it's Coco, it's Munir. One team a lot of people expected to be here. One team, you know, most people would not have expected to be here. And that is the team wearing red. That is Munir and Coco placing well above their Ooh. PR, starting off this game very strong. I mean, I'm just looking at blue team right now, and they are just getting comboed into all these other signatures, right? Especially that side stick from cross to cross. That being said, though, Nies has a side stick of his own, but that is actually going to be Coco taking out Nies' free stock. Okay, surprising. Nies is going to be knocking Coco off stage. Godly wants that side. It doesn't actually connect it, though. What's going to happen off stage? It's going to be Nies taking out that stock. It's going to be Mooney now being the stock tank for the red team, holding on, staying alive. But the question is, for how much longer? Regardless of the result of this set, even if it's like a 3-0 a for, for Godly and Knees, I really hope Coco and Munir stick together and are able to make it out to BCS because I want to see how they play mm -hmm. against the rest of the world. Keep in mind, Coco is PR 9, Munir is PR 20. That is such a massive difference compared to Godly and Knees, uh, and they have a lead. They're playing for second, guys, get down. You yeah. might fall. Gotta be careful. It's crazy. Point. EU EU's a powder keg right now. Except Coco, I don't know, it might be a 3-0 if we're not careful here. We're looking at the red team, Munir, or Coco, on final stock. Mm -hmm. Munir over on the edge, going big with the GC down signature. Almost got caught by that. You saw the exclamation points come out. Mm -hmm. Almost got hit by that side signature over the corner from Nice. Knees looking for the recovery. Ends up just getting anterior by Munir. Oh, sliding off there, looking through that end sig. Not going to be so lucky that time around. Does it connect it? Munir finds ah. the recovery. That's not enough to do it. Almost. Just quite. And now Knees looking for that D-Light. Is that going to do it? Yes, it will. He okay. almost got the turnaround, uh, I can't remember, if it, yeah, it was a side air, turnaround side air off of the GCD light, and then went for the D-Sig to bounce off the main stage, take off the top. Mm -hmm. That was a good choice there to just kind of cover that ground right below him with that flurry of three arrows. And again, if, if there's anything that Godly and Knees just do so well, even in like the heat of battle, they're able to pop out like a 2v1 combo, like out of nothingness. It's, it's just the ability of the best 2v2 players to somehow like filter out all of the noise and chaos that's happening to find the right options. Like, even that dodge up from Coco was so huge. He couldn't find anything immediately mm -hmm. after that, but it was great placement. Right now, Moonin. Okay, I'm gonna be looking for that anti here. Knees just gonna be finding a counter hit in that moment as well. Oh, that was such a bait. They were both, they both had their back lines ready. They had their shooters out. They were like, ah, you're gonna hit my teammate? My teammate's gonna hit you for hitting me, pal. That had so much depth. That had so many layers. And now look at the situation for the blue team. Godly, stuck off stage, has to make it back against Gauntlets and Lance. Coco and Muni are looking so good right now. And Godly still not done quite yet. Still has a bit of life left in him. Will he be able to make this happen? Oh! Not quite. He tried to go for the unarmed recovery to get the reversal onto Munir to take him off the top, but the priority came out for the neutral air that Munir threw out. That's why you heard mm -hmm. that recovery get interrupted. What I really want to talk about was how this like last stock transpired. That was kind of crazy because I feel like the most basic doubles counter play that there is, is I'm going to let my teammate get hit. I'm going to stand behind them, and then while they're stuck in all that hit lag, once I react to the animation, I'm going to come in and punish them yep. for it. So guess what? Blue team did exactly that, and then red team had their back line ready for that to happen. Yep. They were just up ahead in the layers and the positioning, and I think that's kind of sick. That, that was pretty cool. It was set up almost like Brawlhalla is a turn-based game. Yes. And uh, as you can see in front of your very eyes, it is not a turn-based game. This is very much in real time, and things happen so quickly. Okay, the start here, kind of going back and forth <laughs> between who is in control of the combos and the follow-ups. Going to give the edge a little bit to the blue team. Let's see, Coco is able to grab a weapon there, but Munir is taking so much damage. Blue team definitely with a better opening. Now as we get a little bit more into this Ooh, game, it has a little bit more meat on it. Coco over on the edge. Somehow was able to get the touch on the wall. It almost looked like he didn't touch, but I guess yeah, he I knew that spacing so perfectly when he threw out that ground pound. He knew that spacing, but guess what? If there is anything that blue team knows right now, it is a lead. Munu, though, wants to make sure that they forget all about it with that side tick. Tries to take it off the side. That's going to be a stock off the bottom with that spike. And now Munu going to be looking for that. And Sig doesn't actually find it. Godly getting so aggressive off stage. Wanted to make sure that that did not go unpunished. Which is crazy because he's at the weapon disadvantage until picking up the mm -hmm. axe just now. Oh, the side light into the recovery does take Godly off the top. Eyes are on Munir. Coco's there to kind of jump, hit that Nair in case Nies wanted to fast fall through the platform, puts pressure onto Munir to get that stock, or at least do a little bit more damage to get him into KO damage. 
Cloudly patrolling the ground right now. Nice. Beautiful and Cigarette. He was just waiting for that moment. He was like, ah, it's my time to shine, baby. Caught him in the air, and then air traffic controller Godly said, you cannot land here, and then just like the ATC does, threw up his giant fists and said, you can go land somewhere else and send him into the blast zone. This is a really good game. You know, the stocks are flying. This is a very fast-paced one. But right now, Moon is going in against Godly, dealing a lot of damage to him. Substantial. Nice. Even Coco wow. was hunting for that side air to finish up that stock of Godly. Godly's just barely holding on. The Rayman pick is so good here because of that. Not necessarily the highest defense, but far from a low defense legend. One for one, oh, Dara. We are so even in this game as Coco and Munir are up 1-0 in this set. This might be the sickest set of tonight. It might be. We'll just have to see how this ends up panning out. At the moment, right now, it is all up to Knees to stay alive, to stay healthy. <gasps> they got the stack combo. They got the 2v2 for a second. Not able to really fully transpire into ever anything, though. Godly wanted that down offstage. Didn't connect it. Looking for that D-Light. What's it going to be? One player of each team completely split from the other. It's Godly and Coco in the middle. Big side air. Some of these moves, though, they're KO moves, but they're from the wrong side of the stage. Big split between blue. Godly's <gasps> trying to get over there as fast as he can. Knees is spacing. Knees knew exactly how much he had to be able to make it back onto the stage, but at what cost? This is doable is what I would say. Then Silver Neutralite comes out. Red team of 2-0 to o on the verge. One game away from making that bracket reset against Godly and Knees. This is insane. What were the PR placements again? Uh, not. 9 and 20? Oh, let me let me uh, double check that. Uh, Taz and to double check. 9 and 20? Yes, it is 9 and 20. I, this is basically The Rock talking about and promoting Black Adam and being like, the, the balance of power in the DC universe has shifted. Except like everybody actually cares about this instead of that dog water movie. <laughs> That pop left stick, and that made me feel good. I got a lot of dopamine from that left stick laugh. That's that's all I need for the weekend. You can silent laugh the rest of the weekend. I don't even care because I got that from left stick. I got it from toast too, man. Whew. Everyone here needs to appreciate me more. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, also deserves a lot of appreciation, and I think they're gonna get it. Nice casting transition. Is Munir and Coco? Thank you, God. thank you. I appreciate okay. that. They're that's fine. they're coming out this game. Uh, really no major lead across the board as we get like 35 seconds into the game. Until that happens, all of a sudden, knees taken out. Beautiful follow-up. Charged it, I think, just a little bit. Had the perfect timing on it to make sure that took out Godly. And Red Team's got a nice lead as we get into game three, potentially the bracket they reset get that, game. They want to get that second set in. And I got to say, they are doing phenomenal at the moment. That is going to be Godly cleaning up that one stock off, though. Now Moonily taking his sweet old time, getting back onto the stage, dodging past that Neutralite. Gets back to center, is what I would say. Finds a good cover. Nothing else really past that, though, because Godly is nice and healthy. Not going to take too much knockback from it at this point in time. Coco backing off. Knees almost got double juggled for the second, but again, Godly comes in, saves knees. The coverage that Munir has with his signatures after like Coco either whiffs a move or baits a move. Okay, we have the combo here. Unfortunately for the blue team, it was a little bit of team damage coming out in that, so they couldn't extend it. And knees actually ended up taking damage, who is the most damage on the field right now. So really couldn't use that in the long run. It's actually not worth. Unfortunately for Munir here, does get the Nair follow-up for a little bit more damage, oh, not Munir a KO. Oh, wanted that GC delight so badly. That would have been, been so sick. It would have been huge. Okay, what's it gonna be? Goes nice and high. Knees makes it back as well as nice. Godly. But that's gonna be Knees' second stock on. Now Godly, two stocks, about to lose that one as well. Dude, those Off wings are so big! Who knew that they reached that far? Oh my gosh! Well, clearly he did. Yeah, Munir did, the and, and uh, Godly didn't. Me and Godly in the same boat on that one, and that's not a boat I want to be on. Yeah, this is where we say the cliche, yeah, I got hit by that. Because yeah. I did, and yeah. so did you. You know what? All of us got hit by that in that moment. But now, you know what? Blue team trying to make the best comeback that they can in the moment. Going to be knocking down Coco to his last stock and focusing on Munir for a second. Knocking him up there. Let's see how Nies is able to control the ground. Looking for something, but nice landing with the downer. Munir was avoiding damage for so long until I think that neutral light came out from Godly. Munir is disarmed. He's going to be looking for a weapon spawn. That's why he's jumping up so high in the air. That cider is going to send him flying. There is a weapon spawn on the field. No one's making a huge move for it. The great follow-up. Godly nared. Knees down. That led to Munir hitting the unarmed ground pound. Now with a bow in his hand. 
Great oh, follow-up okay. from Coco. Is he? Yes, Munir's able to get back at least touch, but in comes the ground pound, and Coco is not going to let that slide, giving Godly plenty of punishment and getting the bracket reset, not in a game five, not in a game four, but in game three. Yeah, uh, this is kind of crazy. So I'm looking actually at the set history between the two because I'm curious if these two teams actually have gone up against each other, and the answer is no. yes, to my understanding, at one oh, community yes, one. event yeah, in the right. past. Campus Clash 2023! And you know what? In this very event, Coco and Munir ended up taking the first set, and then it seems like Godly and Nies still won the second one. So I'm curious to see if that prophecy is going to remain true this time around. From a community event to an official one, let's see what happens. I never understand how top players will have such massive swings where like the first set will be Coco and Munir 3-0-ing Godly and Knees, and then the other set that happened in Campus Clash being the opposite and Godly and Knees 3-0 Coco and Munir. Oh, they inflict curses upon like, each other. Somebody the, wins a set and they're like, okay, curse of dropping you control. The, the non-top player mind cannot comprehend this, and that is my mind. <laughs> yeah, you just can't wrap around it. No, like, I, I legitimately cannot I'm... understand how major swings like that work. Well, I guess we'll just have to see what this game holds and if there's any changes from set to set. But they're just not slowing down. They just went into the game one of the new set. Let's see what happens. At the moment, Oh, knees. Godly. Why'd you go for the stomp there? There, You could have done the stomp side on the right side. That was crazy. I guess it was middle of the stage, but that was a tough attempt from mm -hmm. Godly, who just swapped over onto the Taros. I don't know if this is like a mad pick. I don't know if this is like a pocket pick that he had. I don't know if this was part of the original game plan going into this weekend. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll see what, you know, Red Team has clearly made him uncomfortable enough that he felt the need to mix things up at this point. Does get the Stomp Sider. Finally taking out that stock one on Mooney. And once again, Blue Team has a very gentle lead. But if I've seen anything between those two, it is Niza's lead immediately dissipating. And then Red Team is going to do something huge to be able to get a massive insurmountable lead over Blue Team. So let's just see how it pans out at the moment. Mooney is so scary to get back down. Gets a couple of hits in. They're scrapping. Everybody is fighting. Now you saw that little combo there from Coco and Munir, and that was tough because Munir was in like a weird spot where like Godly was coming at him from behind and the knees was like right in front of him. And he had to figure out like, do I want to try and attempt to pick up both of them in this? Do I go for knees? Do I go for Godly? And I think he attempted to maybe pick up both as he stepped back just oh, a little bit so before clean. throwing out the neutral light. Godly put on final stocks much before everybody else. We'll see if knees is right behind him. Godly now spawning back in at the weapon disadvantage, not the greatest spot to be if you're a Taros player. Okay, Nii's gonna be finding that new trailer. Just a quick little get off me option. Waiting, 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 looking for the next opening. Huge side out, gets knocked off stage, and Godly does not even care. Godly's number one priority at the moment is making sure that Nii's is okay. And once he's made sure that Nii's is okay, he's like, okay, go through. You can fly, little bird. You can go out there, you can find that edge guard, and then you can get a couple of big stocks off. Nii's still holding on to that second stock. Red team down to one stock apiece, but Godly has to be careful to not take too much damage now. Still doesn't have the weapon in his hand. He hasn't had it long enough to really make much of a difference on this final stock just yet. He does have the hammer, which is kind of the signatures that we're really looking at when we're looking at those game-changing signatures, like a cheeky uh, gravity cancel side <laughs> signature or a neutral signature on the corner. Stomp side air almost hit him right into Nisa's neutral signature that came out. Oh, and that's Nisa's aggression coming into play again, trying his best to chase him down. Godly coming back down here, maybe threatening with the idea of a down and Muna coming back onto the stage, being nice and patient, avoiding the weapon toss. Ooh. Okay. Getting all that damage and the recovery doesn't KO quite yet. Coco staying in the game. A cheeky D light down air into the recovery. I feel like I don't remember the last time I saw one of those coming out. It can be a little bit more difficult to pull off. It's very dependent on where you hit the down air with the angle. I can't believe he didn't get punished for that. That signature that is really, really long. It made the connection. It got the KO. All of a sudden, Munir is in the 1v1. And because Nice didn't have his weapon, that gave Munir plenty of time to use the side airs from the gauntlets to get over to the wall when normally he might not have been able to. But ultimately, the result is Nice taking him off the top. Yeah, this is looking now really similar to what happened at the community event at Campus Clash, um, where Coco and Nina won one set against Godly and Knees in the uh, grand finals. And now, in the bracket reset portion, Godly and Knees have taken one game. So my question is, are you going to see the back-to-back 3-0s -back switching up on who, which team is actually getting that 3-0? Ooh, maybe Red Team will have a little bit more to say in the matter. Only time we'll be able to tell. Jumping into game two, this is the conclusive set of EU2s. Let's see what we got.
Seeing if we can see anything on the live stats as we get into this one. Man, Knees put out 609 damage. Is Godly still on the Roman Reigns? He is still on the Roman Reigns. He wants to give this one another shot. Of course, they won the victory that game. But from the Taros players, I'm still looking for some more juice from the Taros players today. Not that Deltas was bad by any means whatsoever, but something that's more uniquely Taros than just oh. getting more damage per move. But look, okay. at these, look at these two of you. Big look, swings. These combos are fantastic at the moment. They got so many different hits. Godly trying to pick up the pieces. They're positioning. They just covering different in space they have given red team absolutely nothing they gave them no openings to get out of disadvantage in that moment they played off of each other beautifully within a minute two of those stocks are gone none of which belonging to blue team and knees not stopping off okay. stage anytime soon until coco has a say in the matter yeah, Coco was ready to go in there and commit even though he was unarmed at the weapon disadvantage because he he was in white when he did that. So a million things would have to go wrong for him in order to like really lose his stock or take a ton of damage there. And only really one thing had to go right. And now some things are going wrong for the red team as Blue grabbed a beautiful combo, putting Munir into KO damage and getting Coco right there as well. Stomp side. Is, oh boy, this is the best possible situation for the Blue team, which is two simultaneous edge guides and uh, the worst possible outcome, which is both them got on and godly gonna be knocked down to his second stock everybody has two stocks apiece but look at red team look at that damage they are about to start losing some of their own that's gonna be one now the question is i mean what what can Mooney stay alive well, he's going to at least live through that edge guard after taking the stock from knees. The stocks overall are not too bad. We just have to make sure God, if we're red so team, that's moment. exactly it. We have to make sure that Munir doesn't lose that stock. And just like that, he does. Knees was laser focused. So many KOs off the top coming out from knees, also on the sides as well. But I feel like knees has been taking more people off the top today than any other player in this bracket. Mm -hmm. Okay, at the moment, slowing down the pace of the match for just a second. Such good coverage. Godly on the ground. Knees going to be up in the air. Um, and as a result, th there was nothing that Mooney could have done to avoid all that damage. Coco, once again, going to be looking through that opening with the new chiller. Doesn't actually get it, though. Godly tries to come back on and follow up. Doesn't find that sidelight either at that point, but the attempt, the idea, it's, you know, it's present. You saw the sidelight come out from Coco there. And he ended up hitting Munir, immediately moved out of that instead of like muscle memorying into the mm -hmm. sidelight into the neutral air. Didn't get punished for it as well. And of course, the D Sig from Munir taken off the top there. I think it's huge. To take away that stock from Godly. I, I swear it's it's significantly bigger. It is than, getting bigger than it every single be. time that we see it. So. I, I think so. It's like every, every 500 likes on this tweet, the wings get bigger in game. And it went viral. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sure? That's going to be a stock off the top. Going to be cleaning it up with the new chiller as well. Oh, my. Okay. Yeah, they're running through it. Uh, I think you're exactly right. We very well may see the, the, the mirrored score that we saw in the previous game from a 3-0 to an 0-3. So this is less about the switch and more of just like a change in the play style. This is not the same godly and ease that we saw in the free set. And that is most shown by the start of this game. You saw, it was not even just the combo, it was not just the synergy and being able to get that damage output. It was in the positioning, it was in the option coverage. So often, Godly and Knees know how to break out into formation. Hey, I'm gonna go left, you're gonna go right. I'm gonna go down, you're gonna go up. I'm gonna be on the ground, you're gonna be sitting up in the air as well, and we will cover different space. As a result, the option coverage compared to previous games. I mean, it is amazing, this game. And I'm curious to see if they will have it going into this next Three, and potentially two, final one, one of EU. Four. And we're going over to the Demon Island, comparing that to Apocalypse. We have much smaller sidewalls and we have no soft platform, no safe spots for anybody. If they want to retreat and go over and stick on the wall, it's dangerous. If they want to float above, it's also dangerous because they don't have that soft platform in the way. They don't have that soft platform that, that they can touch down on and reset Not their jumps. Moonier has been going for that D-Sig on the edge and like he hasn't really been punished for it, but like I know he wants it and I do hope that one day he gets it. I just wonder if he can do something else that gives him something different be it maybe just go back onto the stage and focus on the other teammate um just to try and help them out when you can but what a recovery such a generous hitbox such a nice angle as well to boot that's going to be Nisa's first stock gone and godly finding a recovery into the gc delight and the ground pound as well excellent option coverage he's been nailing those delight ground pounds on so many different opponents 
and Coco is going to fall as well. That is a full team wipe for the blue team. Oh, no. And this is a lot of damage they were able to add. Oh, man, they got the stock off of it. The ground pound coming out from Godly in orange. That yeah, is that's a just huge move That is Toto's to with Hamlet getting yes. the ground pound. That is that sheer amount of foil you send. Man, if I'm that team, I'm a little bit upset at this point. Five stocks to three. Foil stocks to three, excuse me. As long as Knees stays put. Even so, even if Knees falls right now, Coco's in the orange, and Godly's been doing a great job surviving. He's able to swipe that weapon out of the air, so he's not at the advantage for too long. They do get the stock off of Knees. They are not too far behind, but just the way that Godly and Knees have been playing so far in this set. Nice interruption, right? That neutral light Absolutely. was exactly what Knees needed to make sure that Godly didn't take any more hits. But that being said, the damage has been basically evened up despite that interruption. Godly looking for the jump call out. Such a good anti -air. That was saying, hey, stop jumping. Get out of my face. We just saw Knees go for the side light into, I believe, a recovery at first. Coco dodged down. And then we saw for Knees go for the side light into the GC side light. That time, Coco dodged up to get away from that. So he's mm -hmm. changing up those dodges as Knees is also changing up his initiations. And now Coco put on final stock. Munir, That's yep, it. there's Godly with the D light ground pound taken out of the game. It's like we are seeing a flashback to Campus Clash on September 7th. 17th, the 3 0 to 0 3 true combo as Godly and Knees turn it up here in the 2v1 against Coco. He's doing his best to float around, hit it down here. Nice dodge there, but instantly Knees comes in for the punish. There's a weapon spawn on the field. Coco's going to grab it to keep the weapon away from Godly. Yeah, but as long as Knees just plays back at the moment, there's nothing that um, Coco can do. Unfortunately, this is looking more and more unlikely as time goes on, especially once you start connecting those down. It is Coco using the weapon toss as a way to land, but that's not going to be enough. Enough. The stomp into the side who doesn't KO quite yet. Godly goes out there for the down is it Coco do the being so patient again? off stage. No, he's gonna go back. Be careful. A little bit of team damage, but doesn't matter ultimately. Looking for the neutral light. Goes for the <gasps> okay. There's no way. No. There is no shot. I I still don't think so. It's gonna take a lot. Okay, Godly not gonna be able to get the good copy follow-up, unfortunately though, but that's gonna be the neutral light. That's going to be it, everybody. You know what that means? Godly and knees are you bra hollow. EU2's champions for, uh, for the fall. Wow. And for the final 2v2 event mm -hmm. of this year. And this was in an interesting bracket. I'm really curious what Knees and Godly thought when they saw Akno and Blaze sent down to the elimination bracket so early and then...